ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise for the academic procession and the St. John's College class of 2022.
Remain standing for the national anthem.
Please be seated. Welcome to the St. John's College Commencement 2022 in Annapolis. We're now opening the 230th commencement ceremony at our college. Welcome to the members of the class of 2022, both undergraduates and graduates, to your families, and friends, and to our faculty and staff. They're all here to bear witness to your graduation and to celebrate your achievements. We have also with us today a few special guests whom I wish to recognize. We are pleased to welcome members of the Board of Visitors and Governors, Marty Acosta and Gigi Escalante, Adrian Trevisan and Joanna Wilson, and members of the St. John's College Alumni Association, Gigi Escalante and Sabina Salat. But it is the class of 2022 and your accomplishments that provide the impetus for our gathering here today. These commencement exercises mark the end of formal undergraduate and graduate studies. Since 1850, American English has employed the word commencement, as graduates may remember from the French word commencer, to connote the ceremonies by which members of the graduating class earn the privileges of a degree in higher education. But commencement also connotes another beginning, a new start, the entry into the post-college and post graduate studies life. Think of today as a day of transition, one that catapults you from your life at St. John's into a new phase in your life. St. John's equipped you well to take the next step, whether into the workforce, travel, volunteering, graduate school. The next venture or adventure is ahead with many more to come as your life unfolds. And you embark upon life with the confidence of a Johnny, ready to listen, to think, to read carefully, even instruction manuals if ultimately necessary. <laughs> Certainly, the last few years were more of an adventure than any of us could have expected. I just joined you a few short months ago and still got a small taste of what you went through. This semester alone, there was a delayed start and you returned masked. Then, with senior essays finally behind you, masks went optional, but then they came back. You took it all in stride, most of the time, and looked out for each other. You celebrated whenever the opportunity arose, from the senior essay party to the student tutor toasts. What a journey it has all been. The comparison to the Odyssey is probably never far from your mind. After all, this journey has been exhausting and exhilarating at the same time. Your lives were constantly disrupted. Summer internships were canceled, travel plans delayed, jobs no longer existed, and stores you loved closed. Some of you didn't want to give up on in-person learning and took a year's leave. Others decided to just power through. All of you felt you didn't deserve this. You felt robbed. The uncertainty of what would happen next left you anxious and unsettled. It happened to all of us, but it hit you harder and felt less deserved. And it wasn't deserved. But none of you gave up. To your immense credit, you kept going. You didn't give up on your dreams and your goals. You saw it all through, from the first essays and Don Rex to senior essays and oral exams. And that's why we're all here today. We all, faculty and staff, 
your parents, partners, spouses, family, your friends are immensely proud of you. Your resilience gives all of us collectively hope for the future, and it should certainly empower you. A St. John's degree has always been an accomplishment, but a St. John's degree in a pandemic is a special achievement, and you should take pride in it. Today, we're here to congratulate you, to celebrate you and your achievements. But we at St. John's are also here to support you in the future. As a part of your extended family that cheers you on always and hopes that you'll carry a part of St. John's with you wherever you find yourself in the world. You will find other Johnnies in unexpected places. Seek them out and stay connected to the college and our community, to your tutors and the members of the staff who nurtured you. And of course, your friends and classmates who were there during the long nights you spent with Aristotle and the even longer ones you spent with Kant. <laughs> but before we move on to the next part of celebrating you, bear with me for a second. Graduates, please stand up and turn around. I know, bear with me for a second. But I want you to look at the very people who made this day possible. Those people who love and support you. Your parents, your family, your partners, your spouses, and your friends. They deserve our collective gratitude for having laid the foundation for you being here today and for having made it all possible that we're here. So on your graduation day, your families, I believe, deserve an ovation. Now, please turn back around and take your seats. We shall now proceed to the announcement of prices and presentation of student awards. I will ask the Dean, Joseph McFarland, to present this year's awards and the registrar, Alex Mayer, to assist in their presentation. The prize winners should please come forward to the platform when called. Those receiving honorable mention should please stand for recognition. To the member of the senior class who has written the Breast Senior Essay, offered in memory of Susan Irene Roberts of the class of 1966, Keaton Yon. Honorable mention, Olivia Petard. <laughs> to the member of the junior class who has written the best annual essay, offered by Mrs. Leslie Clark Stevens in memory of her daughter-in-law, Catherine Milroy Stevens, Isabel Emmond. To the member of the sophomore class who has written the best annual essay 
offered under the will of the late Judge Walter I. Dawkins of the class of 1880, Gabriel Hess. to the member of the freshman class who has written the best annual essay. Two winners, Yusin Han, Juli and Julianne Yoder. Honorable mention, Roser Leon. <laughs> to the Graduate Institute student who has written a distinguished preceptorial essay in the year of 2022, offered by the Alumni Association, Anthony Mepe. To the Graduate Institute student who has written a distinguished tutorial essay in the 2021-22 academic year offered in memory of Lawrence Burns, Will Frieda. <laughs> to the winner, to the member of the senior class for excellence in speaking offered in memory of Senator Millard E. Tidings of Maryland, Olivia Petard. To the student who submits the best English version of a Greek text offered in memory of John S. Kiefer, President Emeritus, Stephen Carino. Honorable mention, Ivan Zimbruski. <laughs> to the student who submits the best English version of a French poem offered by the Board of Visitors and Governors, Ava Lehrman.
to the student who submits a fine original English poem offered by Dr. George Austin in memory of his brother Henry, Ellie Lobbs. To the student who submits the most elegant solution of a synthetic problem offered by the class of 1986 in honor of Bryce Jacobson of the class of 1942, tutor and director of Athletics Emeritus. Honorable mention, Ye Young Chen. <laughs> and honorable mention, Louis Rosenberg. To the student who submits the most elegant solution of an analytical problem, offered in memory of James R. McClintlock of the class of 1965, Chris Yufei Liu. To the student who carries out a fine laboratory project offered in memory of Curtis Wilson of the by the class of 1963, two winners, Ellie Lobbs. <laughs> and Jesse Tagliani. Honorable mention, Sujin Lee. <laughs> to the seniors, through participation, leadership, and sportsmanship have contributed most to the St. John's athletic program, a special blazer, Ray Matsumoto. And for the second social blazer, Olivia Petard. To the member of the senior class who's contributed outstanding service to the greater Annapolis community, offered by the Caritas Society of St. John's College, Connor Flynn. To the member of the senior class who's demonstrated greatest care for and service to youth who reside in the city of Annapolis, offered by the friends and family of Marvin B. Cooper of the class of 1969, 
Adel Townsley. To the member of the senior class who submits the best work of visual art to the community art exhibition, the Charles Vernon Moran Prize, and God Butzorg. To the senior who has demonstrated excellence in the arts, literature, or sciences, the Walter S. Baird Prize, Ellie Lobbs. in John's tradition that the graduating seniors choose the commencement speaker. They often choose someone from within the community, someone who knows them well and made a meaningful contribution to their education and to their intellectual and personal development. Our seniors know how much the Siebger contributed to their accomplishments and he truly appreciates the depth of them. This year's speaker, Mark Sennett was both surprised and immensely touched to be selected for this great honor by you, the class of 2022. It came unexpected as the invitation reached him in his well-deserved retirement in Texas. <laughs> Mark Sennett was a tutor in Annapolis from 2000 until his retirement in 2020. He taught both undergraduate and graduate classes during his years at St. John's. Mr. Sinnott also held the National Endowment for the Humanities Chair from 2010 to 2015, examining the generalized dynamics papers of William Rowan Hamilton, a pioneering 19th century Irish mathematician and astronomer. From his birthplace in Wyoming, Mr. Sinnott became a mathematician in Texas with a specialization in the math and quantum mechanics. But that would understate his background and the breadth of his interests. With a graduate degree, with a PhD in theology from Cambridge University, he was a Presbyterian minister from 1993 to 2000 in South Carolina and Texas before he joined the faculty here. That background has served him well as he commands the stage as easily as the pulpit. But it is his dry humor and his great appreciation of students that made him a favorite and brings him to the stage today. I am very pleased to present to you today, Mr. Mark Sennett. accorded a tutor than to stand where you have invited me to stand. And as already been mentioned, I never thought that honor would come my way, nor do I altogether understand how it happened. <laughs> but I'll always be grateful. Even now, though, I'm kind of wondering whether or not you realize what you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> On uh, Sunday morning, about eight minutes after 11, you've delivered a more or less captive audience into the hands of a retired 
creature. <laughs> Some would say you deserve everything you get. <laughs> Some might say you were asking for it. And I'd be remiss if I didn't let you have it. See, they're starting to worry a little bit. You see that? They're kind of, <laughs> kind of bothered. I even have a text, biblical text. <laughs> now, they're starting to worry a little bit. <laughs> but you know, there's no point in worrying about it because there's not a thing you can do about it. <laughs> the apostle Paul likes to emphasize the fragility of life as the context through which God can disclose his power and majesty and mercy. So in the midst of a long passage in 2 Corinthians, he says, we are struck down but not destroyed. We are perplexed but not driven to despair. We are being killed every day. And yet, behold, we live. I'm concerned with that second contrast, perplexed but not driven to despair, owing to the opinion I have, this impression I have, that in our nation, perplexity and despair are often the same thing. For all too many people, perplexity means despair. And I think that's an unfortunate thing that we should try to be aware of. One of the results is we have lots of pronouncements by various public personalities in the form of determinate, unrevisable knowledge. The last time, I don't remember the last time I heard someone in the public life express an opinion. Things we're told from every direction of the compass is some piece of finished, irresolvable, unmutable knowledge. Well, I think, I hope that you know better than that. After you've forgotten all the details of your studies here, I hope you'll always remember how terribly difficult knowledge is and how rare. I hope you understand the difference between opinion by which we live and knowledge, which is a very small part of what any of us have at our disposal. One of the consequences of the claims of knowledge all around us is people feel awful free to condemn various people to perdition that doubt their authority. It may just be my opinion, but it seems to me it's getting kind of nasty, getting kind of dangerous. But it's not new. It's been coming on for a long time. Some years ago, President Clinton decided to discontinue the funding of the super collider. That was going to be a big particle accelerator. They were digging a tunnel, circular tunnel, eight miles in diameter around the city of Waco, Texas. Of course, uh, the high mandarins of Texas politics gathered to deplore this decision. There was uh, Governor Richards and Senator Graham and the Speaker of the Texas House and all these spotizators and poobahs and all those people. And of course, they said, no, we can't do this. And they were appealing to public opinion to try to reverse the decision, and I'll never forget Governor Richard's statement, and I quote, the super collider is of fundamental importance to research in high energy physics. Okay, well, I'd been kind of undecided until I heard that, and then I realized, yeah, we gotta cancel this thing we got to get rid of this as quickly as possible because I don't really like being lied to. That doesn't mean that the super collider wouldn't have been useful. I don't know. And I don't mean to 
denigrate Governor Richards. She was a smart lady. She knew more about tort law than anybody else on the planet. She was real good with a 12-gauge shotgun. She was a very impressive person. She did a lot of good things, some things I didn't care for. So what? That's no big deal. But I would have thought she knew rather less about high-energy physics than the average Hottentot. So why am I hearing that from her? It could have been otherwise. She could have said, well, I don't know anything about high-energy physics. But I've been talking to Professor Weinberg. Here we are in the governor's mansion. About six miles down there is the university. Steven Weinberg, PhD, Nobel Prize winner. And he told me he thought this would be, whatever this thing is, would be a good thing to have. And I trust him. So I'm for it. That would have been an opinion. And the ground for the opinion, then I, I might have been entitled to have my opinion and other people could have shared their opinions. Who knows, we might have even broken into a conversation. <laughs> then what? <laughs> I don't know. Nowadays, of course, last two or three years, we've had three or four versions of something called the science. Anybody know what that is? Take kind of an abstract now and you put a great big definite article in the front of it, now you've got the science, okay. There's not one version, there's four or five or nine or 17, I don't know, coming at us from every direction, promulgated by people that feel entitled to revile or denounce anybody that has any doubt about it. Did I mention that I didn't like being lied to? And I have a feeling I probably am because I'm reliably informed there's 100,000, 250,000, half a million, I don't know, people, researchers all over the world. Guess what they're working on? The corona class viruses. What do you think they're doing in those laboratories? Maybe they've organized ping pong tournaments or... They're working on the virus, right? They've got open questions, they don't know how to answer, and they're working away. What's that mean? means the science is as mythological as the jack of spades. What happens if we just admitted in public, we don't quite understand that? Here's our best opinion, we therefore recommend that. When we know better, we'll let you know. But no, we have pronouncements of determinate, final, un, unquestionable, knowledge, where in fact all we've really got, all we've almost ever got is opinion. Perhaps if we were somewhat less frightened of our own perplexity, we could show a little better respect for other people's perplexity. Maybe we could have a humane discussion of something of importance in this society. I thought we might talk just a minute about how that might come to be, and I thought maybe the best place might to be is to think about your experience right here in the last four years. You are now members of the graduating class of 2020. That means that you largely comprise the entering freshman class of 2018. You remember any of those people? We do, trust me, <laughs> yeah, don't we, yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, freshman classes are all a little bit different, but there are generalities, there are certain patterns that repeat, and over time you can realize what these are, just kind of a point of departure, sense of orientation. As I recall, the members of the entering class of 2018 were what I would call audacious puppies, as ignorant as eggs, <laughs> nevertheless persuaded they were God's gift to erring mankind. <laughs> That's not a good combination, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing personal when I was 17, I was the same way. So were they. Goes with the territory. That's why we have this college here. And that's why we do all this. That's why we built all these buildings, laid out these beautiful lawns, had these programs of instruction, lavished money on the faculty, 
No, no, no. Okay, forget about the lavishing money part. Okay, we didn't do that. Be a good idea, but it hadn't happened yet. Okay, all right. You know, most of the people that built these buildings, they were, they knew you were coming, but they knew they'd never meet you. That's how much they loved you, like those people out there. They were getting ready for you before you were glimmering your daddy's eye. That's why we were here, okay? That's so that you didn't have to go on being audacious puppies. You could take another big step toward being civilized human beings. The first step of which is to find out, to realize, in fact, that you're pretty ignorant. Still are. Welcome to the club. That didn't last much. That didn't last very long, did it? I mean, that audacious puppy stuff. You fought a couple of years, you fought a couple, three, three or four weeks in front of Troy. That was puzzling. Then you got blown all around the west, e west eastern Mediterranean. That was puzzling. Then you had a close encounter of the third kind with Plato's Republic. Spent a couple of weeks wearing suspenders because he bit your ass right off, didn't he? <laughs> you know? Meanwhile, your, your tutors are sitting around the table with you, getting to know you, finding out who you are, learning to distinguish you one from another. It wasn't your knowledge, you didn't have any. It was your questions. I mean, being self-interested persons, we were concerned with who could help us do our job. That was the people who asked good questions. That was people that could pursue questions, invite other people to help them with their perplexity and offer their assistance in other people's perplexity. We began to pick you out because of your skill in navigating the perilous waters of perplexity. And now here you are. We almost don't recognize you. Had a pretty good bead, we thought, four years ago, not now. The graduating class of 2020. That definite article is not helping me much. You invited me here to speak to you. I don't quite know why. I began in perplexity, and I'm ending in perplexity. I spent eight, eight weeks trying to think of wise things to say. I don't feel particularly wise. I won't presume to offer any great wit. Don't think I have any. I will presume to speak for my colleagues we were astonished by you. You have thrown us into perplexity. I want to suggest three remarks very quickly. That perplexity which you have is unique to you. If you give your attention to the beginning of Paul Tillich's systematic theology, you will encounter the following remark. Man, he was writing in the 1950s, didn't spend much time worrying about gender. He doesn't mean male folks, he just means folks. Humankind. Man is the question he asks about existence. In response to the question, God gives his answer. And under the impact of the answer, man asks his question. That's a 20th century Augustinian rephrasing the original teaching of Augustine himself in the 15th book of De Trinitate. He invites us to seek God's face evermore. And then he says, we urgently seek him, the more sweetly to find him. And we sweetly find him, 
the more urgently to seek him. Perplexity is the order of the day. Perplexity is what human existence is. In fact, it's what each one of you are. You are the question that you ask about the inexhaustible abundance of the world and its creator. You are your perplexity. That's the thing that sets you apart from every other human being that ever lived. And you could just, as I say, several, several obvious remarks. One, never apologize, never be ashamed of that bone deep perplexity that is who you are. That's God's gift to you. That's your calling, that's your marching orders. That's the means by which you will become who you already are. Secondly, as we've been reminding you up here for four years, your perplexity is not your private business. It's not your property. You don't get to hoard it. Your questions and the way you ask questions, that offers glimpses to things that other people will never see. You're responsible for assisting them and inviting their assistance to you. And that doesn't stop when you get these diplomas. We did it here in the college, and you might think of that as an apprenticeship. But this society needs examples of joyous perplexity. That's not to say that you can change society. I suspect that El George Eliot's probably right, and most of us will rest in unvisited graves. But it might be the past to a civilized life. It might be a way of affecting you and your friends and your family and your neighborhood and the people you happen to know. Thirdly, therefore, there is no call for disrespect of the perplexity of any other human being. They may not have read great books. They may not know how to phrase it. They may not understand anything you're telling them. But you need their help and they need yours. We are joined in a great community of perplexity. And especially together, that does not mean despair. That means the unity of the human race. So why did you ask me? Don't know. I don't feel very wise right now. I feel astonished by you. You have thrown me into perplexity. But I'm not driven to despair. To the contrary. Thank you, Mr. Sinnett. And we can add to the qualities of the class of 2022 good taste in choosing a commencement speaker. We will now move to the conferral of degrees. Let the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts stand. Mr. Dean, the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts stand before you. I, the Dean of St. John's College of Annapolis, Maryland, bear witness that these young scholars have successfully applied themselves among us 
to humane letters, philosophy, mathematics, science, languages, and music. That they've passed the period of their course in our halls. That they've been called to examination in the presence of members of the college and the public. And that they have abundantly proved themselves well versed in all these studies. We, the president, the dean, and the tutors of St. John's College in Annapolis, Maryland, bear witness that these young scholars have successfully applied themselves among us to humane letters, philosophy, mathematics, science, languages, and music, that they've passed the period of their course in our halls, that they've been called to examination in the presence of members of the college and the public that they have abundantly proved themselves well-versed in all these studies. And finally, that in accordance with the order of the trustees, in this public session on the 15th day of May, 2022, they've reached the degree of Bachelor of Arts. In witness of this, we have on this aforesaid day and year subscribed out names to these letters, which have been confirmed by the great seal of the college. By command of the Board of Visitors and Governors of St. John's College, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. The graduates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts will come forward as the name and hometown is called. Leela Al Haider, Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Magdalena Solvig Anderson, Chicago, Illinois. Rosie Anderson, New York, New York. <laughs> Sydney Antonoff Wertheimer, Kenfield, California. Noah Baya, Sharmanstown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and Kad Batsorig, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. James Michael Beckwith, Bolton, Connecticut. <laughs> Hannah Gwen Beversluis, as Kanaba, Michigan. Declan Bigger, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> Ar 
Alexander Boyashi, Tirana, Albania. Madeline Elise Bourge, Washington, District of Columbia. <laughs> Alicia Herrick Bravo, Troy, Ohio. Ann Dixon Burke, Baltimore, Maryland. Grace Koch, Ogdensburg, New York. Luke Cartwright, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Rebecca Chen, Kiaoxiong, Taiwan. <laughs> Elias McCluskey Christian, Eagle River, Arkansas. <laughs> Kay Cobb, Newport Beach, California. Jackson Sears Kerr, Falls Church, Virginia. Claire Herrera Collins, Burbank, California. Ava Grace Cousy, Falls Church, Virginia. Sheba Ross Delaney, Houston, Texas. <laughs> Genevieve de Magestri, Annapolis, Maryland. James Dennis Saranovich, Annapolis, Maryland. <laughs> Caleb Conrad Dutton, East Falmouth, Massachusetts. <laughs> Emily Burton Evans, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on completion of requirements. <laughs> Lena Isabella Fisher, Carlsbad, California, upon completion of requirements. <laughs> Connor Flynn, Lusby, Maryland. Alyssa Gabrielle Funai, Fredericksburg, Virginia. <laughs> Brendan Chan Garcia, Houston, Texas. Jacob Garvey, Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> David Gibbons, Beverly, Massachusetts.
Hun Jin Ha, Seongyam, South Korea. <laughs> Daniel Han, Flushing, New York. Winston Hayward, Cambria, California. <laughs> Shen Shu Hong, Bucharest, Romania. <laughs> Ye Chi Hu. Changsha, People's Republic of China. <laughs> Christopher John Irwin Deal, Pencil Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Masako Sydney Ito, Tokyo, Japan. Cleo Jabine, Buffalo, New York. <laughs> Willow Jackson, Woodland, California. <laughs> Keaton Yon, Rogue River, Oregon. Spencer Fox J, New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> Noah Conley Jones, Alna, Maine. George Kalandaja, Tbilisi, Georgia. Levan Kalaja, Tbilisi, Georgia. <laughs> Ali Kizzeltu, Walnut Creek, California. <laughs> Ellie Gold Lobs, Boston, Massachusetts. Adi Lahiri, Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Maya Sof Lake, Maya Sophia Lake, apologies, La Jolla, California. <laughs> Bryson Ronald Lambus, Kenton, Ohio. Gavin James Lancaster, Mansfield, Massachusetts. <laughs> Joseph Lee, Timonium, Maryland. <laughs> Jung Yoon Lee, Seoul, South Korea. Su Jin Lee, Busan, South Korea. Chris Ife Liu, Guangzhou, People's Republic of China.
Xiaoxing Lu, Taiwan, People's Republic of China. <laughs> Sophia Martin, Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Stefan Mason, Annapolis, Maryland. Joseph Mastro Donato, Union, New Jersey. <laughs> Rei Matsumoto, Kobe, Japan. <laughs> Henry McNeil, Bethesda, Maryland. Juana Melendez, Guadalupe, Peru. <laughs> Gabriel Mendez, San Diego, California. <laughs> Monica Molina, Las Vegas, Nevada. Kyla Rose Murphy, Dedham, Maine. <laughs> Jenny Nguyen, Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> Haley Nord, Noblesville, Indiana. Stephen James Norris, Annapolis, Maryland. <laughs> Ray Osmani, Tirana, Albania. <laughs> William David Payne IV, Hillsborough, North Carolina. Zion Peart, Jessup, Maryland. Dante Giovanni Perotto, Albany, New York. Olivia Starr Petard, Denver, Colorado. Catherine Grace Quinn, Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> Joseph Richard, Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> Elsa Hensley Rizgin, Winchester, Massachusetts. Hannah Rose, Westminster, Maryland. <laughs> Raphael Isaac Rose, Silver Spring, Maryland. <laughs> Paul Rosenberg, the Paul Rosenberger the Third, Damascus, Maryland. Hunter Lewis Sears, Charleston, West Virginia. <laughs> Connor Alexander Shin, Bethesda, Maryland. <laughs> J. 
Chester Sims, Madison, Connecticut. <laughs> Natalie Smallage, Ithaca, New York. <laughs> Jesse Ann Bailinga Tagliani, Geneva, Switzerland. Caitlin Paula Tobias, Groton, Massachusetts. Adel Townsley, Los Angeles, California. Rigel Turner, Athens, Georgia. Turgal Tufshinjargal, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. <laughs> Kwa Ming Van, Vung Tao, Vietnam. <laughs> Devin Van Gordon, Wallingford, Pennsylvania. Ian Archibald Walker, Owings, Maryland. <laughs> Madison Wall, Annapolis, Maryland, unable to attend. <laughs> Yuan Ying Rene Wang, Taiwan, People's Republic of China. Ryan Patrick Watson, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. <laughs> Madeline Weaver, Frederick, Maryland. <laughs> Catherine Iao Wei, Guangzhou, People's Republic of China. Jordan Taylor West, Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> Sean White, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> Lily Faith Wickner, Gaithersburg, Maryland. Jack Charles Williams, Hawthorne, California. <laughs> Molly Woodward, Lowell, Massachusetts. <laughs> Huang Shu Shu, Chongqing, People's Republic of China. Kaylee Rose Young, Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> Moab Sharif Ismail Yunus, Cairo, Egypt. <laughs> Mana Yumi, Tokyo, Japan. Ivan Nicholas Zimbruski, Deer Isle, Maine.
Let the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in the Liberal, of Art, liberal Arts stand. Madam Associate Dean, the candidates for the degree of the Master of Arts in Liberal Arts stand before you. I, the Associate Dean for the Graduate Program in Liberal Education of St. John's College, bear witness that these scholars have applied themselves among us to the program of studies in the Graduate Institute and that they have successfully completed the program in the Liberal Arts. We, the President, the Associate Dean, and the tutors of St. John's College, bear witness that these scholars have applied themselves among us to the program of studies in the Graduate Institute of Liberal Education, that they've successfully completed that program in the liberal arts. And finally, that in this public session on this 15th day of May, 2022, they've reached the degree of Master of Arts. In witness of this, we have, on this aforesaid day and year, subscribed our names to these letters, which have been confirmed by the great seal of the college. By command of the Board of Visitors and Governors of St. John's College, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts in Liberal Arts. The graduates for the degree of Master of Arts will come forward as the name and hometown are called. Kasia Alexandria Boretsky, Granite Falls, Washington. <laughs> Olivia Braley, Annapolis, Maryland. Samuel Ross Berger, Chatsworth, Georgia. <laughs> Jeanette Renata Elise Corey, Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> Jordan David Dix, Lons, Michigan, unable to attend. Keith Thomas Flaherty, Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> Olivia Anderson Gerard, Washington, District of Columbia. <laughs> Andrew Lawrence Graney, Wilmington, Delaware. Joe Craig Heron, Jr., Alexandria, Virginia. <laughs> Madeline Elizabeth Hutton, Portland, Oregon, unable to attend. <laughs> Margaret Judge Kalaki, Washington, District of Columbia. Jason Alexander Scott Coonan, Staten Island, New York. <laughs> Paul Christopher Lambricht, Moline, Illinois, unable to attend. Gavin Lauer, Santa Fe, New Mexico. James P. McMillan V, Traveler's Rest, South Carolina, <laughs> unable to attend. 
Andrew Maglio, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. <laughs> Anthony Michael Marcellina, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, unable to attend. <laughs> Jordan Brianna McCullough Reed, Kansas City, Missouri, unable to attend. Patrick Ryan McLaughlin, Elkridge, Maryland, unable to attend. <laughs> Anthony John Harris Methe, Toronto, Canada. <laughs> Garth Yule Mrammer, Brooklyn, New York, unable to attend. Brad Jeffrey Plain, Waukesha, Wisconsin. <laughs> Peter Lewis Quintana, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Juan Carlos Reyes, Newark, New Jersey, unable to attend. <laughs> David Antonio Gonzalez Salgado, Tegucigalpa, Honduras, unable to attend. <laughs> Leah Serenas, Homewood, Illinois. Tobin Daniel Stauffer, Stewartstown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Kaylee Althea Steele, Indianapolis, Indiana. <laughs> Samuel Stone, Plymouth, Indiana, unable to attend. Michael Torres, Bluffton, South Carolina, unable to attend. <laughs> Diana Carolina Viegas, Washington, District of Columbia. Congratulations to our new graduates. We wish you all the good in the world. And as you take this education with you into the rest of your lives, remember not only to be courageous, but to be temperate, to be broad-minded, to be magnificent, to be magnanimous, to be ambitious, to be patient, to be a friend, to be truthful, to display wit, to display modesty, and to seek out righteousness. As a signal of your completed graduation, you may now move your tassels from the right to the left. I now ask everyone to rise. At the conclusion of the academic procession, our newest graduates may collect a small gift to be enjoyed with your friends and families. Thank you for being with us for this celebration. Once again, congratulations to our class of 2022. Godspeed.
Pleasure playing with all you guys. Oh, yeah.